the Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. We're back, this is Dave Vellante, and this is the Converged Infrastructure Spotlight at EMC World 2014. This, of course, is theCUBE. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Dave Hart is here, he's the Executive Vice President and COO of Presidio, and he's joined by Manu Thomas, who is the Vice President of Solutions, one of the lead architects at this solutions provider and, and partner of VCE. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Good to Thanks, see you. great to be here. Thank you for having us. Dave, let's start with you. Um, Talk about, let's start with Presidio. What's the company all about, and how long you been around, and what's your specialty? So we've been around since uh, 2004. Uh, we're a pretty large size, uh, over a $2 billion uh, integrator here in the U.S. We're focused primarily uh, with data center cloud technology, as well as security, mobility, collaboration, and uh, core network infrastructure. So you, are, you, you operate primarily customers in the U.S. Yes. Um, and what kind of you know, industry, size of customer, paint a picture for us. So I would say uh, anywhere between that uh, 1,000, 2,000 seat, uh, all the way up through the you know, Fortune 100. Uh, we do service customers internationally, uh, but our primary sales and marketing uh, is happening in, in here in the U.S. And, you know, vertically, we cut across you know, all, I think, you know, we're, we're, the solutions we're bringing to market are very horizontal in nature, so, uh, there's probably no vertical that we're not playing in in some manner or fashion, some more than others. Uh, uh, but really, if you're a consumer of IT and, and IT is a strategic part of your business, Presidio's there for you. Vanu, uh, so I want to turn to you as the lead architect, uh, one of the lead architects at the company. A lot has changed yep. since 2004, obviously. One of those big changes was, of course, converged infrastructure. I mean, up until that point, you had you know, new architectures, things like thin provisioning and data deduplication, a lot of you know, so-called feature products yep. that were interesting, but not really necessarily game-changing. Uh, and then along comes this notion of converged infrastructure. Talk about how that has affected how you architect solutions. Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I think fundamentally what we are seeing in the industry out there is this move towards cloud-based solutions. They, you know, customers want you know, faster agility, time to market, and they want to try and uh, leverage cloud-based solutions. What we've seen in the converged infrastructure space, especially with VCE, is it really plays into that particular strength. What we've seen with our customers is when they want an infrastructure that is quicker, that is more agile, that's faster for them to go to market, we've seen converged infrastructures like VCE able to fit that particular segment. So we're able to bring the uh, converged infrastructure quicker to market, quicker time to deploy for the customers, and in turn it helps them be quicker and more agile with their customers, and it, enables them to grow their business much faster. Uh, did, you, did you all have to change your business somewhat? Well, you know, I mean, a lot of the, the nasty heavy lifting that was being done when you had to you know, do your own compute and storage and networking, you guys would presumably do a lot of that yep. for customers. Did, w when you first saw VBlock come out, did you say, oh boy, you know, now they're sort of going after our business? Uh, or did you say, okay, it's a natural evolution of of systems, we'll just keep going up the stack. Talk about that a little bit, Dave. That, that's the natural evolution of, of, of our industry, really. If you think about it, you can go back to PCs. You know, there was a whole industry around kitting together pieces and parts to make PCs, but they evolved into, you know, you just, who'd buy a clone? The, the homebrew club. It, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, right. clone PCs. Is, yeah. and our job as integrators is to constantly be moving up that stack. So. We embraced it from the get-go, from the initial launch of you know, the first VBlock back when it was Acadia. You know, it looked to us like a, the trade. It was a good trade. So yeah, we might lose a little bit of professional services to you know kit all this together, but the ability to take you know something that robust in terms of a solution to market, so that we can start really moving from virtualized infrastructure to true private cloud and hybrid cloud infrastructure, you really need converged infrastructure and you need VBlock underneath that to do it right. So it, it was great for us. We just, we just had um, two gentlemen from Apollo on. They talked about how essentially what they were doing was replicating you know, cloud infrastructure within you know, their on-premise environment. Is that what people are doing yep. with, with your solutions? Yes, and I wonder absolutely. If you could, so talk about that a little bit more, because everybody's been talking about doing that. 
Uh, I remember we, we, we've been talking to, you know, converged infrastructure since we first saw it back in 2009, and that's what everybody wanted to do, but when you really started to peel the onion, they weren't doing it yet. So, but, but it feels like here we are in 2014, IT is finally closing that gap with that notion of, of cloud. Is that, is that fair, and can you talk about it and talk about any examples? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the fundamental premise, again, I go back to this, is you know, people wanted to go to the cloud because of a couple of reasons, right? They wanted the quicker time to market, which I mentioned. There was a perceived notion of it being cheaper. Uh, and then the third reason that they wanted to do it is when they wanted a particular resource, they would get it on demand. So what, con what VCE did with the converged infrastructure is they bought a couple of those critical components inside the private cloud. The, one of the biggest concerns with the public cloud was the whole security notion and the performance notion. With the VCE infrastructure, you're able to now bring those same advantages that you had with the public cloud, but then in a more secure and you know, having better performance considerations. But what we've also done at Presidio is, uh, Dave mentioned this earlier, we've also given um, an add-on on top of the vBlock, which is the ability for us to do you know, full-fledged management orchestration on top of a vBlock, and also be in a position to offer capacity on demand with the vBlock. So we could essentially sort of mimic a public cloud inside a private cloud environment with the security and the performance features. So can we talk about security a little bit? As, as I, get, I get two, you know, we do a lot of these CUBE interviews, yep. right? You get two ends of the spectrums. Um, but you just said that you can do it more secure than you get on the public cloud. I wonder if we could unpack that a little bit. Why is on-premise and why are your clients able to build something that's more secure than the public cloud? I could say public cloud has all these resources, all these PhDs running around, giant scale, they spend tons of money on, on security. Why is that? Well, to begin with, the public cloud infrastructure is built on a, a premise of multi-tenancy. So for them to make the, the efficiencies, the cost efficiencies work, they essentially have to put multiple customers under one single physical infrastructure. Now, what they claim is the fact that there is adequate security between those tenants. So it's like saying Coke and Pepsi existing on the same infrastructure. Now, if you're a customer, are you really going to believe that, and can you then ask the public cloud provider to show you all the security uh, technologies and architectures and methodologies they've used to protect that asset, I don't think they really want to delve into that. You're secure until you're not. Yes. <laughs> and, right. I'm feeling secure today. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me tomorrow. And you know, <laughs> all the technology, all the process will not change the fact that if you're in a multi-tenant environment, you, know, you have exposure not only to other providers, but to you know, the greater operation that, that's there. Whereas in a hybrid cloud, I mean, I'm sorry, a private cloud, you, know, you can control your own destiny and there's no one to point to but yourself in terms of where does the buck stop. And then to be able to take advantage of those public cloud capabilities, maybe you don't have them on-prem, you don't have the resource, or maybe it's an elastic sort of resource, that's where hybrid cloud comes in. And, and Vinu was talking about our, our Presidio Managed Cloud offer, where we can come in and we can create this orchestration layer for you, and we can have private cloud service catalog items for you, your Unix development environment, your SAP environment, uh, and then if you need to get to salesforce.com or some sort of public cloud capability, we can build that into your service catalog so we don't have this rogue IT thing happening where business units are doing whatever they want. They come to the service catalog. If, if it's not in the service catalog, we'll put it in the service catalog so there's command and control across the enterprise. Yeah, the yep. vast majority of public cl clouds are multi-tenant. Yes. Multi the one I can think of that's not is ServiceNow. Yep. And actually, if you look at their numbers, they're substantially better than the other public cloud suppliers. If you, if you line them up to Amazon, Workday, Salesforce, et cetera, the service now, non-multi-tenant, is actually superior. What about availability? Is that a factor, or can you architect around that in the public cloud? So if you look at, uh, and I'm going to use Amazon Web Services as an example, even if you look at what their CTO has said, right? he basically said, look, infrastructure, we don't build infrastructure that's highly available, highly redundant. We expect the applications to be able to do that high availability and high redundancy. So in the case of public cloud, what we've seen with many of our customers is when they actually migrate the legacy application, it breaks, 
right? And we've already you know, seen a lot of instances when these applications fail in the public cloud, because the public cloud infrastructure, number one is multi-tenant, so it's got that security problem, but it's not built as a resilient and reliable infrastructure. They, they expect the application to essentially do that work for them. So now you're talking about our customers having to rewrite their legacy applications, and that's a significant investment. Yeah, you're not seeing a lot of high volume transaction processing going on in the, in yep. the, in the public cloud. I mean, yet anyway, it's going to take a long time to. Yeah, it's to mainly dev and test right now. That Although, we see. you know, at the same time, I, I, want your, I wonder if I get your opinion on this. We used to say the same thing about VMware, remember? Mm -hmm. It wasn't that long ago we were saying, oh, VMware largely test and dev, and Maritz said, we're going to go after every workload, any application, and they've seemingly done that. Will that happen with the public cloud, or is it a different animal? I don't think the public cloud is going away. Uh, yeah. and so it's not going to, I, I think it's, it, it will grow almost you know, concentric circles. Or we've always built highly available infrastructure, we'll continue to do that. Uh, and we'll always use service providers. You know, we used to call them ASPs. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, and before <laughs> that, we called them service bureaus, right? So, so that, that Time sharing. The, yeah, the model, you know. I've been it, around it, a long time. Yeah, the, the, uh, <laughs> me too. Right? Got the hairline to prove it. But they, they, they uh, <laughs> You know, they're gonna, th those services will evolve and they'll grow and they'll be integrated. And again, this is the natural maturity of our, bi of our business and our yep. industry. Is, you know, we're not doing this to make it more complex, we're doing it to take advantage of new capabilities. Another interesting thing that came out of the Apollo case study w was um, in terms of the organizational structure, um, they essentially said, we brought in um, the, 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 the capability uh, and then it catalyzed an organizational change. Do you find that a lot with your customers? Yeah. I'm always advising customers, now you better figure out your organization before you bring in this converged infrastructure, but I'm starting to rethink that. Maybe if you do that, you'll never bring in the converged infrastructure. If you, if, if you bring in the converged infrastructure, is it like breaking some eggs and actually catalyzing an organizational change? How are organizations changing as a result of this new technology? So what we've seen is, you know, organizations who essentially waited and then said, let's, let's try and figure out our people and process before we actually bring these converged infrastructure technologies, they've been waiting for a long time, right? What we've seen is, and when they've been waiting, they've, they've seen the emergence and the, you know, the birth of the shadow IT and the rogue IT and things like that. What we've seen is, when you actually sort of, you know, push the converged infrastructure in. So we've had customers who said, hey, I don't, I don't care what you guys do, I want a private cloud, hybrid cloud infrastructure right now, ready to go, and provision new applications. We've sort of seen that sort of, let's push this converged infrastructure, this private cloud thing, really start making changes for our clients. Excellent. Um, well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Dave, I'll give you last word. Uh, EMC World 2014, uh, we're seeing you know, massive changes. We're hearing all the software defines and the federation and flash changes, converged infrastructure. What's the sort of bumper sticker that you'd put on you know, EMC World 2014 from, from Presidio standpoint? Um, as you're pulling away from Las Vegas, what's the bumper sticker say? Yeah, I think we're, we're enabling the private and hybrid cloud. Great, excellent. Dave, Manu, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Thanks very Pleasure much. Pleasure to have you guys. Very All right. nice to you. Thank you. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is day two. We're live at EMC World 2014. I almost said 2012. We'll be right back.